All right, so we're here with Ted Phaeton, the founder of Modern Man. And Ted, I got to ask you, why did you start the Modern Man Project when you already have a successful job as a meteorologist on television? What was the impetus? Yeah, I would say um, a couple of books, No More Mr. Nice Guy, The Mask of Masculinity really opened up my eyes to just the reality of mental health and how it hits men. Understood my blessing of having a father figure, my dad still in my life, and how it was a void that so many of us uh, day in and day out live with and don't talk about. So I said, why not have that conversation? Why not sit there? I've always seeked out male mentorship. I've been lucky to have that when I moved away from home. And I wanted to kind of make those male intimate conversations and relationships kind of mainstream front and center. And that's been, been kind of going all cylinders ever since, man. Dig it, dig it. I mean, you know, listen, everybody has problems and men are people too. And, you know, we definitely have challenges as a father. That was one of the impetuses for me to get started with the awesome dad movement was I wanted more dads to step up and play a part in fatherhood. I got to say, just a side note, I would not expect to go this route, but I just got off a call with someone and this guy made made a comment that really kind of ticked me off. I was like, okay. dude, what are you talking about? And I, so I wanted your your opinion on this. The dude dude says to me, um, so we brought on a woman onto our staff because who wants to buy from a business that's just two white men? Like, why hmm. would someone want to work with a business that's just run by two white men? Why would someone want to do that? I'm like, bro, we are two white men talking right now about being on a podcast together. So what do you think <laughs> about that? Do you think that there that maybe this feminism thing has gone too far? Give me a hot but- take. I'll to give you a hot take. I, if if you have results, I'm buying. That, that's all. I don't care if you're black, white, yellow, Spanish. I, I don't care if you're a guy, female. I, I want the results, right? I'm buying the promise of the business. I do think we put too much credit and too much value on certain levels where, okay, diversity is important. You can get a whole bunch of different perspectives. But if there's two gu- white guys running a business, I'm not going to not buy from them because they're two white guys. If they have a successful portfolio, I'm buying from you. I don't... I don't necessarily want to talk necessarily how feminine has impacted society because I think you have extremes on both sides. The extreme feminism might be a little too much. I'm not a fan of that. But when we talk about toxic masculinity, I think that goes too far. I think there's a lot of value for the masculinity that us as men have. And two white guys running a company probably have that hunger in them. They have that line in them, which gets success. And I'm, I'm buying. Yeah, the merit, merit-based. I like that. I, mm-hmm. I, I could not... Agree more. And I know when we got on the show, I said, Ted, I'm going to try to find ways to disagree with you, but I, I, I agree with you. I think, um, I don't, I don't care what I don't care. Yeah. I, who, who can do the job the best? I think that's important and which might even actually be not human at all. It might actually be a robot, right? It might actually be AI that does the job the best, which means your attorney, you're fired, medical doctor, you're fired, writing staff, you're fired because I got this robot that can do everything better for me. Merit based. So tell me, Ted, as you're building up the modern man platform, again, you've got a primary job, you're building up this side hustle. How are you using AI to empower yourself, your team to get more done in less time? I think AI is helpful for some of those cognitive heavy labor processes, right? The planning process could be drastically reduced when you implement and use AI. Anybody who works on a base level, they're in danger of losing their jobs. Now, I think AI can do a very good job on a basic level. It could write a blog post for you, but it can't capture that emotion quite yet. Now, it might get there, but... What I use AI for is macro planning, micro execution. What I mean by that... Chat GPT, Notion AI, whatever you prefer to use, give me 52 topics over the course of the year that's going to be focused on the challenges that men face, and I can have 52 newsletters based off of that. After yeah. those 52 topics, I can go to each topic. I have Notion AI. Give me the research topics. Let's say one of the issues is suicide rate amongst men. Okay, Notion AI, that's topic number one for week number one. Give me scientific research and the most latest statistics that you have in your system when it comes to men and suicide. So I'm using AI as a research tool, a idea generator, and and, and also kind of a, a, I wouldn't say a fact checker, because I'm also going to check the facts of the stats that it gives me. But I use that as almost a guideline and a template for how I gather my information to build upon my execution and the delivery of what I give in terms of value to my audience. So after you've developed your framework, I like this idea of using AI to create a framework of, let's say, a full year of emails, for example, give me 52 email topics. What do you do next after you've got your topic of emails? Are you writing it out? Are you using AI to write out all the emails for you? Are you using AI to write out the structure or maybe a bullet pointed list? How are you 
both combining that scalability and automation with personal with personality. So the specific of what I use it for is usually every Monday I have a modern moment uh, podcast that comes out that I record. So I'll get the topics and I'll pick the topic and then I'll go into, and my favorite tool to use is Notion. I have a pretty much a content idea generator. That's where all the, of them lie. And then in the specific topic, let's say one week, uh, I talked about being a high value man. I asked Notion AI to implement give me a list of some of the benefits of being a high value man. And I use that as research and I'll bullet point and script out my episode from there, chat GPT or notion AI will kind of give me more details and I'll rewrite it. I'll put my voice to it. And even further, Hey, while you're at it, give me some SEO friendly words for this, right? Let it do the SEO research for me. After that, I'll put all that in. I'll go to Canva Canva has an AI feature for AI generated images. I could put those details in there and I could pretty much use AI to kind of give shortcuts for the artwork, give shortcuts for the SEO research. And then again, always add my voice. That's the key. If I don't add my voice, it's generic. Why would anybody listen to it? So I'm taking that information, I'm gathering it with the knowledge I already have and then crafting my own voice from that script and from those bullet points. So I've used Midjourney for AI gener- AI art generation. I've used uh, a, a few, but I have not used Canva. What's been your experience with the Canva AI image generation? It's a little clunky still. Um, Mid-January is very good. That's actually one of my favorites. The AI usage for Canva is a little clunky, but if you have a good base. For example, I have a template in terms of what my, my YouTube templates are looking. So they're almost the same each time I could just tweak little, uh, little nuances into what the topic is. And that'll give me a bit of a different picture for right now. I have my cover picture. It's usually a picture of me with the little white outline, things like that. I have different creative backgrounds that I add on to it. That's how I've used it. So they're still abstract in nature, but if you're looking for clean, some of the work I've seen you do, Mark, it looks great. I think you really need to get in the weeds with the program like mid-January in order for that to really get what you want. Yeah, mid-January. And, and yeah, that's part of the value of having a, a, a you know an, an awesome team behind me and, <laughs> and all the systems I built out over here at Mark Smart Media. And that's what we do. We turn Zoom calls into podcasts. Um, I, so I have a question here. I, th- I find it interesting that you're you know diving into chat GPT, into Notion, into AI to help you develop out um, a program for what I would consider a more masculine man and, you know, embracing your masculinity and so on and so forth. I'm wondering if you've ever run into this hiccup because we were, we were, I was leading a mastermind group uh, a few weeks ago and I had asked chat GPT a question. I can't remember what the question was, but I asked chat GPT a question. And then one of the team members said, Hey, can you ask chat GPT to write it in a more masculine tone? Because he also runs like an alpha, an alpha man brand, um, you know, exercise, fitness, commitment to your family, personal responsibility, um, work hard, but also maintain, you know, a loving relationship with your spouse, all good stuff. I think that yeah. I think is important for men. So we asked chat GPT, could you rewrite this in a more masculine tone and chat GPT promptly responded back? Well, I'm sorry, Mark, I cannot <laughs> perpetuate pernicious and dangerous gender stereotypes. And we were like, what? Yeah. <laughs> what? Have you ran into that where chat GPT just goes like all soy boy on you? Yes, I, I have where, you know, I'm like, man, give it to me straight. You know, give me, give me just the meat. I don't need the little dressings and everything. Give it to me straight and chat GPT. It combats that. And, and I also say, I think what we're talking about is PC culture and keeping it real. And That's why I think there's an an importance with your mastermind, my mastermind, my podcast. Those are areas where my brand, you know what you're going to get. I'm going to tell it like it is. That's what I mean by adding my voice to it. So I can get the information from ChatGPT. I can get the information from Notion AI. I don't have to expect them to do that legwork because there is going to be a a, a limit in terms of what they're going to do. I don't have to be PC when it comes to, and by PC, I mean politically correct. I don't have to be politically correct in my mastermind. I can be straight with the guys that I'm talking to. 
right? That's on brand for what they expect from me. And that's why they come. And that's why we'll be in the, on the podcast. We'll talk about, hey, life's going to punch you in the face. You're going to have to get up and do it anyway. Yes, there might have been some things in life that have been unfair. You're going to have to get up and do it anyway. I'm talking to you as a black man on the podcast who's faced racism in, in my life. That doesn't mean that I have to blame that for where I am in the world. I've never used any instances with racism as an excuse for me not being where I want to be in life. And I'm not going to condone people saying, oh, you know, I I can't. No, this is a situation. This is what we're facing. The facts are the facts. Reality is reality. Let's get up and go. Now, chat TPT is not going to write that for me. No, no, hell no. It's not going to write that for you. (laughs) But, but so, so here's, here's, I guess, where we have this kind of interesting uh, conflict, right? Between Ted Phaeton's brand and the modern man and where AI and tech is going is, is a general is a general theme, right? Mm-hmm. So does it worry you at all that if you're using AI and chat GPT to create the framework and create outlines and create concepts for the modern man, that maybe it's going to dilute what you're actually trying to do and dilute and maybe, and maybe put words in your mouth, so to speak. I, and, and let me kind of ex- explain it in a slightly different way. It's, it's been, I've heard it explained that the technology revolution is the commoditization of information Mm -hmm. and the AI revolution is the commoditization of influence, right? Because if we're using AI to help us make decisions, to help screen, to write, to do research and whatnot, the information that our AI system brings back is going to directly impact our interpretation of the concept or the point we're trying to make. So does that worry you at all that using AI is going to dilute or hurt the message that you're trying to bring to your brand and to your clients and to your community? Uh, I mean, I'll start with a short answer and it's no, it, it doesn't worry me. And I'll tell you why. If, if I go to an art store and I say, hey, I need magenta, I need Robin's egg blue and I need a violet. And they say, we don't have those colors. Okay, well, what colors do you have? They're going to give me a limited amount of colors, but me as an artist, I know the picture that I want to paint, right? So I'm not going to be limited to the colors that are provided to me if I know how to make the colors work and mix them the way I want to, if that makes sense. I think what we're looking at with AI and modern technology, a lot like social media, is these are tools that are going to provide immense amount of advantage to those who use it properly. If you give me a hammer, I could maybe make you a coffee table. If you give that same hammer to a carpenter, they're building you a house, right? So I think it's important for us to understand what these tools are actually able to do and what they're used for, and then use them the way we intend to use them. Don't let them use us. And that's what I think happens is the dangerous thing about AI, to your point, is some people could easily let AI use them. Write a blog post for me. I'm not even going to proofread it. Just post it. I'm not even going to fact check it. Just post it. That's the lazy route, right? I know the intent of what I'm trying to say. That's why I use it for idea generation. Case in point, 52 ideas. Mark, I probably use 23 of them, less than 50%. Sure, sure. Right? But it gets my juices flowing. It gets my, oh, okay, now we're on a roll. It gets me started. And that's kind of what saves me that cognitive work of getting the ball rolling. The bus is on, in motion. I can take it from here. So that's, that's why I don't think I'm too concerned about it because what's ending up happening and what is going to happen is you're going to have a lot of voices sounding the same with AI and those who are putting in that extra work and being authentic on top of the use of AI is who's going to stand out at the end of the day. I like that. Good point. It's definitely a really, really powerful tool for fighting writer's block. And people always ask me, Mark, whenever I'm a guest on podcast, I've guessed on probably like two dozen podcasts in the past month. And this question always comes up, Mark, if you had one piece of advice for the audience, what would it be? And I'm always, I always unequivocally say, spend 15 minutes a day using chat GPT to solve your problems that you're facing in your life. Yeah. Unequivocally, unbelievably powerful. So before I let you go here, Ted, what is one piece of advice you'd give all the listeners today? Start, start. I think we spend a lot of time suffering in our minds and that's what extends the suffering in actual action. We, think it's too hard to start the podcast, too hard to start that business, or maybe you know you should do something for your business to increase sales, increase leads, things like that. And you're you're making it bigger in your mind. You're making a, a, a molehill into a mountain. So whatever it is you've been pushing on your calendar, whatever it is you've been kind of holding on for tomorrow or procrastinating about, just do it. Just jump in. It's going to take a lot shorter than you think it is. And it's not as big and scary as you think it is as well. 
Yeah, I don't know if Ted Fayton said that or Nike said that. I don't know, but just I like that. Just yeah. do it. Just do it, baby. Just do it. Uh, Ted, where can we find you? Uh, you can find me at themodernmanpodcast.com. I'm on uh, social medias at the Modern Man Podcast on Instagram. We share all our reels, clips from our podcast, and uh, you can check out the Noble Knights Mastermind from there as well. And yeah, give me a shout. would love to hear from you guys. Thanks for being here, Ted. Appreciate it. Thanks, Mark.